All right, welcome, welcome back, Orn Park Moto. Uh, this is a fun track. I do believe it doesn't exist anymore, so it's nice that iRacing has it uh, recorded. It is, it is a fun track to drive. Um, it is a track where there can be a lot of crashing, so do watch out this week. Uh, it's easy to take yourself out, spin out, and if a person in front of you is spinning out, it is quite easy to get collected, so watch out for that. Uh, I did do a track guide on a different configuration of this. It is no good. It was in the early days of the Ray, uh, and it, it was awful. So uh, if you have that file saved, get rid of it. This setup is much better. Um, so uh, now ride height is not as low as it goes. Uh, minus 15 in the front, minus 14 in the back. There are some curbs here that aren't really bad that you want to go over, but this track, you do really want to keep the tires planted on the road. Um, you, you, you do not want to be bouncing the car around and having three tires on the road because you went over a curb. Uh, you could also even argue um, having the ride height a little lower if you want a little bit stiffer car, uh, but 15 is, is pretty good. It goes over the curbs without too much trouble. Uh, ARB is zero, don't want understeer. Damper compression is 20. I did have it turned up uh, w one one or two notches. It did help with the braking, however, uh, I did find that it was producing understeer through some of the fast corners, and understeer on this track is very bad. Usually a little understeer isn't necessarily a bad thing, but on this track, understeer is really, really not good. Brake bias 58.5% for me, for you, uh, depending on what you normally like, it's probably a percent or two higher than what you normally have it at. Uh, this track this track has uh, a lot of uphill, downhill braking, and you're going to find out in turn one whether or not your brake bias is right. If you were locking up too easy, uh, just increase that brake bias. Uh, spring rates front and back are as soft as they go grip 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 on this track is necessary um, now if you know my channel you know I play around with the cambers uh, 1.3 in the front both sides um, the iRacing setup has it I think at 1.7 which is just way too much this track has some off camber corners uh, and some just pretty flat corners and you need to have more tire on the track, uh, so that's why the camber is reduced. Toe in is 1.4 on both sides. That's to increase the turn in and increase the braking efficiency. That just helps uh, get your braking better and the turn in better because you do need a lot of turn in on this track. Um, in the rear again, spring rate slow as they go. Camber, the left is a little different than the right, 0.9 on the left, 1 on the right. Uh, you can keep them both at 1, it's not a big deal, just the left was uh, not getting as good a temp. Uh, um, it, there, there was a bigger temp separation between the inside and outside, and as well the wear was a little uneven as well, so that's why it's changed. Toe in, 0.4, both sides, that's again to improve the braking efficiency since the brake bias is turned up quite a bit. Uh, ride height in again, minus 14 in the rear. ARB is 5. Uh, you do need to rotate the car around here. As I said, understeer is no good. Uh, if you are new to this track, try a 0. Uh, the 0 will make it a lot easier to get around while you're learning it, but uh, 5 is definitely going to get you going faster. And if you really like a lot of oversteer in the car, you may want to try a 10. But 5 is kind of, I think, the sweet spot. 13 liters, that'll get you to the end. 12, I do not think, will get you to the end. And gear is standard, and really, I'm pretty happy with the standard. The short stack uh, is, is nice through some of the corners. However, uh, you're going to get eaten up on that uh, front straight. It is a long one, and it comes up well short. So standard stack, that's the way to go. Uh, track is 19 degrees. I've done some practice sessions. 19 to 21 degrees has sort of been where it's at. F track usage is 41%, so it's, it's it's a little forgiving this uh, this track. 
and we'll go into the corners in slow-mo and then run it out at full speed so this is coming in I'm not sure if this kink is considered turn one or not so I'm not considering it turn one um, in fourth gear this is going to be a big passing this is the biggest passing opportunity on the track so uh, you may want to practice the defensive line holding the inside here uh, as well so fourth gear now you're looking past the screen barrier to the second green barrier this one on the right that's where we're gonna start to lift and turn in uh, cold tires you may this this is a little tricky on cold tires so just slowly lifting you don't want to just pull off the throttle completely just slowly lift off the throttle still in fourth gear now on cold tires first three laps at the end of the the uh, red and white strip here you may want to shift down into third uh, that's that's going to be a little bit safer first couple of laps this turn is going to be nuts for crashing so watch out so still in fourth gear when the tires are warm and it looks in real time looks like just before the pylons but here in slow motion it's a little bit more than just in front of them probably about two car lengths in front of them getting on the brakes you don't want to stomp on the brakes apply the brakes um, evenly and but very hard braking and shifting down eventually into first as you can see I got a little bit tail happy there but shifting down into first and you have to have the car slowed by the end of the white on the right here and ideally you want to be a little bit more over to the right than I am that little counter steer uh, gave me a little trouble then releasing the brakes, turning in the car, and again, if, if you are hard on the brakes at this point, you are spinning out. So if you missed your braking point, if you're coming in too hot, just keep the wheel straight, hold the brake just a, a little bit longer, miss the apex, go wide, live to fight another day. And then as you come around the corner, just building up the throttle, don't get onto this elevated curb, this, this is awful. Uh, you are going to wipe out if you hit it. So just keeping it really tight up against the white line. But the important thing is, is just getting on that throttle early before the apex. Pretty tight corner, and that's why you need that rotation in the car. And then just unwinding the wheel and working your way up the gears. On exit, you want to be up against this right curb. It is a, a sort of a oval-shaped curb. If you get a little bit of tire on it, no problem. But if you go over this... Uh, it is going to be pretty disruptive. And then working your way up the gears. So this guy actually, um, the, these tires right here on the edge, if you came over too sharp, these can actually catch you. They they are behind the white line. I don't know if it's, if it's like a predictive code thing, but um, they've caught me a couple of times. And if you touch that with your tire, it is race over. So just watch out for that. So up into third gear, and basically, um, in real time, it looks like I'm at the curb here, getting on the brakes pretty hard. Uh, if you're better on the brakes, you might want to be braking towards the end of the white tires here. Um, the, it does work. It's, it's a little trickier, but it, you can make it work. Certainly not on cold tires, but once the tires are warm, uh, you may want to brake a little later down into first very hard on the brakes again releasing the brakes as you turn in if you're on the brakes hard right now you're spinning out and picking up the throttle nice and early um, and again that that curb you can see it it's it's very elevated do not get on that it is trouble and then not stomping on the throttle just working your way up to full throttle nice and easy gets you around watch this cone if you watch any of my race videos you know I've had issues with cones uh, this one can get caught in your car. Uh, it happened a few times. So watch out for that. And then just working your way up into second gear. Keeping it to the left. This is the, the moto section. And then again just keeping the car as left as you can. There's no real great brake marker here other than the crest of the ridge is where you want to brake. And it's pretty hard on the brakes. Shifting down into first gear. And again, just like all these corners, as you turn in, you have to be releasing the brakes. Otherwise, you're going to be spinning out on this track. Getting right up tight against that elevated portion of the curb. Picking up the throttle well before the apex. 
and letting the wheel unwind wide. Um, depending on the car setup and, and different driving styles, you may see people take a tighter line into this. Uh, it, it, it is a decent way to go about it for sure, but I find unwinding the wheel uh, getting out here to the left is the fastest way. You're going to carry more speed. However, uh, watch out, uh, you can get up the inside there. So this one you'll see when uh, it's at full speed, but the trick here is uh, getting that left tire just the edge of it onto this grass. That's going to actually help rotate the car. And as, as you watch here, I, I kind of basically just get the wheel straight for a second in third gear, um, just getting on that grass and then you know, a couple of car lengths here, kind of, uh, well, even before the crest of the ridge, really, turning in already. You have to turn in here earlier than you think. And, and it's full throttle, but just a little lift as you get onto the bridge. And then the important thing is, is you do not want to have your tire in front of this curb on the grass. If you hit the front of this curb, it is very disruptive. It's going to really try and spin you out if you hit that. Uh, so getting onto this curb but after after you miss the front portion of it and then just easy picking up the throttle and unwinding the wheel at this point on cold tires you probably have to do a little bit of a lift um, but once the tires are warm you can keep this pinned and just unwinding the wheel to the left um, getting onto the white stuff here uh, you, I think you you don't want to get onto the gravel, the grass here. Um, I think there is an X if you go really wide. And then before the red and white here, you want a, about a car length in front of it. So if there's a car in front of you, this is going to be a little hard to judge. Cold tires, you probably want to shift down into second gear. Don't even brake. Just just shift down into second gear for the first three, say three to five laps. Um, once the tires are warm though, leaving it in third. Just a dab of brake here, car length before that red and white. Leaving it in third, a little bit of a lift, little dab of brake, and then turning in. And same thing for this one. Um, if you get onto the grass here before the red and white or before the white, I think that's an X. Um, so just watch out for that. And if you get your tire over the white line here, I believe it's a slow down, so watch out. But you got to get onto the the pavement here, the the white pavement. Um, it's it's going to grab the car and it's going to hold a much tighter line. If if you are on the track or even on the curb, you are going to slide wide here. So uh, get onto that white stuff. And it's important pick up the throttles early as possible because you can lose a tremendous amount of time through this section. And again, just feeding it onto the red and white here as well and keeping it full throttle. Um, if, if you did shift down into second for the first few laps, then you are shifting up back into third. And again, cool tires for this part, you may just want to shift down into second, um, but once the tires are warm, just it's rinse and repeat. Just a dab of brake, lift off the throttle, and um, turn in. So again, just before this red and white just a dab of brake, lift the throttle, and then turn in, and then just picking up the throttle nice and easy. And again, don't get on the grass in front of the white stuff, but you have to get on the white stuff. This one's <clears throat> even tougher than the last corner. If you miss this one, uh, you are going to run wide. If you're not on the white stuff, you're going to run wide into that sand. Uh, and that can be very dangerous. You can save it, but uh, you can also spin out and die, so watch out. So catching that white stuff will keep you on track. And then just working up the gears. Now, if you're racing with someone who hasn't watched this track guide, you're going to see a lot of cars, a lot of people who are new to this track go way over to the left. Watch out for that. That is not the faster way through. Uh, you really just want to be mid-track. And then it's it's not much of a sharp turn here. You're not bleeding off any speed. Just a little turn. And then at the end of the white stuff here, now you're switching back to the left. Uh, it is blind. It, it does take a little practice a few few times to figure out 
just where and when to do that. And you want to keep the tire onto the red and white stuff here. If you get onto the black stuff, that's okay. Uh, but if you get way over onto the white stuff, that's going to be pretty disruptive to the car. Uh, you probably aren't going to crash, but you're, you're going to lose some speed, that's for sure. And again, keeping that throttle pinned is the important part. And there's no real great brake marking brake marker here other than you want to brake just before the, the the bottom of the hill. So about a car length before the the hill is out, hard on the brakes, down into second gear, and just like all these corners, you want to be as you turn that wheel you want to be lifting the brakes. And then getting onto the red and white stuff. Um, again, that's pretty important to cut this corner, get it onto that. I guess it's red and yellow, isn't it? Uh, but you do not want to be left of it if this is quite a slope. So if you get your tires into the, the grass here, it is going to grab your car and it is going to be a real problem not to crash. So just keep it onto that curb. Unwinding the wheel, picking up the throttle as early as possible. Unwinding the wheel as, as quickly as possible and getting as close to this wall as you dare. Um, if you scrape the wall, it's usually not an issue. You might get a 0x, uh, but you certainly can hit that wall and, and bend your suspension. So watch out. Uh, the closer you get, the faster you go, but you don't want to crash either. So that's a 110.3. Uh, the optimum is a 110 pretty much flat. Um, th that should be pretty pretty competitive time. Uh, I I'm going to bet there's going to be 109s, especially with a little draft. Just be careful out there, especially uh, your, if it's your first time at it. Again, this is a pretty tricky track to get around without catching someone spinning out in front of you and getting collected. So good luck out there. We'll see you next time. We'll run this out at full speed.